In 2010, Ghana became only the third African nation after Cameroon in 1990 and Senegal in 2002 to reach the quarterfinals of the FIFA World Cup. They finished runners-up in their group to Germany before eliminating the USA in the round of 16. Against Uruguay, they were just a penalty kick away from the semi-finals. This year, they head to Brazil with the aim of consolidating their reputation as one of Africa's leading footballing nations. We have to learn the good and the bad things happen in that, that, that last World Cup. We have to learn the negative and the positive in, in the game. So we need to increase everything that will help us to, 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 to progress in the tournament. I always dream to play um, for my country and especially um, for the World Cup. It's also nice to play in Brazil, you know. Uh, so uh, I'm really waiting and uh, praying that there will be no injuries you know, on my way so that I can go to Brazil. Once known as the Gold Coast, Ghana means warrior king. A former British colony, the Republic of Ghana declared independence in 1957. The name of its capital and largest city, Accra, comes from the tribal word for ant. Ghana is amongst the world's top ten producers of gold, diamonds and cocoa. Ghana's Achatina achatina is the world's largest species of land snail. Their shells can measure up to 30 centimetres in length and 15 centimetres in diameter. A speedier Ghanaian is Ferdi Atto Abobo, who set a world record by running 100 metres backwards in 1991. Ghana's Football Association was founded in 1957 and the national team first appeared at the FIFA World Cup in 2006. They have won the Africa Cup of Nations four times. And their nickname is the Black Stars. Ghana's campaign got off to a perfect start with a 7-0 victory over Lesotho, their biggest ever win in FIFA World Cup qualifying. Despite scoring 16 goals in their first five matches, Ghana still required a point from their final group match against their closest rival, Zambia, if they were to reach the playoffs. Goals from Majid Waris and Kwadu Asamoah secured safe passage for coach Kwasi Apia and the Black Stars. You know, Zambia, we knew they had a really, really good team and um, there was no way, you know, we could underrate them. Even though we needed a draw, but our focus on making sure that, you know, we, we win to make sure that we are, we've cleared the rope. Ghana were drawn against the seven-time African champions Egypt in the playoffs. The first leg was at home, and Asamo Jan eased the pressure when he opened the scoring after four minutes. A wild Gamar own goal put the Ghanaians 2-0 ahead. Egypt reduced the arrears before Waris added another goal for Ghana to make it 3-1 at the interval. It was a similar story in the second half. Jan's second was Ghana's fourth. Sully Montari made it 5-1 from the spot. And when Christian Atsu scored two minutes from time, Ghana was 6-1 to the good, and effectively, the tie was beyond the Egyptians. We couldn't believe that uh, we could score Egypt 6-1, uh, you know, because uh, Egypt, they have uh, great players. They are good team in Africa. Um, we rate them as uh, the best because they have won the most African championship. You know. But we believe that um, we are going to win the game, but not with so much goals. You know, every coach's ambition is to make sure that he qualifies his nation to the World Cup. And for me, uh, that day was um, very special in my life. As a player, Apia captained the Black Stars. And he was the assistant coach to Milovan Rajevac at the 2010 FIFA World Cup. He assumed the top job with the national side in 2012. The coach is a very, very, very decent man. Um, I've met him a couple of times. Uh, he's a quiet man very quiet man, so people thought he might not be able to handle the pressure of the job. 
But I tell you what, he's put his foot down. You know, he's quiet but very, very authoritative. And he's let the players know that I'm in charge of this team. I'm a coach who doesn't talk that much. You know, the players call me silent killer. Um, the reason being that, you know, I have total respect for them. But I always make sure each and every player does what is right, you know, at a given time. And then um, make sure, you know, they perform as well when uh, they wear the national colours. Now everybody believes that um, a local coach, you know, can be in charge of the Black Stars because Chris Pia, he came and then he did it really great for the, for the nation. So everyone is happy and uh, we are all happy because he's from Ghana and uh, he's a local coach and he did it. He dropped some of the senior players, but he's now brought them back into the fold because he knows, look, if I'm going to go anywhere with this team, I need this experience. So people like Sully Montari are back in the, in the squad. Uh, Michael Essien is back in the squad. Um, Kevin Prince Boateng, who had actually said he retired from international football after the last World Cup, is now back in the squad because he knows he needs that blend of experience with the very exciting youth he's got. Asmo Jan is another experienced player back in the international fall. He announced his indefinite retirement in 2012, but now Appiah has handed the 28-year-old the captain's armband. You know, he's, he's, he's a fantastic captain. It's a guy who has been, I mean, bringing a lot of motivation to the country. Let me tell you one thing about the Ghanaian team. There's always unity in the team. When you are doing something, there's unity, you get results, especially. You know, he's a big boy. He's a big boy, but when we are, we are in camp, it doesn't show he's a big boy. We do everything together. It doesn't, it doesn't mind if you are from a lower club or you are a local boy. When we are in camp, we do everything together. We share jokes together and he encourages a lot. Cause a lot of goals for the team, and um, not only on the pitch, um, outside the pitch, he's a great person, very humble. He likes to joke, you know, and uh, he also sings. He's a musician, also, you know. So in the camp, we are always happy. We sing. We have musicians. We have dancers, you know. So he's always bringing all these kind of jokes and dances. He's always making us happy, and uh, in the camp. It's always great with a Samoajan. He is one guy that all the players love to see around. Anytime he's on the pitch, he makes sure you know he plays his role so well, and uh, you know he commands um, the, the boys also to perform. You know, even when sometimes things are not going well, he encourages them you know to make sure they perform very well. Appiah also uses a variety of formations, but he always relies on a solid back four. The versatile Samuel Inkum is likely to be on the right, although he can also be deployed on the left as well as in midfield. Sulimantari and Michael Essien could play key roles in midfield, where Christian Atsu will look to continue a promising start to his international career. Guateng will also challenge for a place after his recall to the squad. Up front, Ghana looked strong, and they were the top scorers in African qualifying. Waris and Jian are notable threats, and Andre Ayu and Kwadu Asamoa could patrol the wings. A lot of the boys who've played here, if the, even the young ones, were at uh, South Africa. So they've got the experience of playing at the World Cup as well. I think they're gonna, probably going to be Africa's most exciting team at the World Cup. Seven players who featured in the qualifying campaign were also members of Ghana's FIFA Under-20 World Cup winning squad in 2009. They will be hoping for a similar outcome in Brazil. Ghana have been drawn in Group G, alongside two of the top three ranked teams in the world, Germany and Portugal. And they'll also face the USA, who they've beaten in the last two FIFA World Cups. Despite being drawn in a tough group, Ghana's fans who make the trip to South America will be sure to be seen and heard. Sometimes 
the sink uh, like Dada me ya ude, me ya ude, me ra yesu. Dada ni nara, me ya ude, ma kumare tu nyum se, en yu nyam ka ude. The Ghanaian fans will be in full voice against the USA on the 16th of June and then again against Germany on the 21st. Five days later, Ghana conclude their group campaign against Portugal in Brasilia. Four years ago, we were at the quarterfinals and we want to improve, so I believe we can go to the semifinals and by God's will, even to the finals. <laughs>